Why do Japanese students consistently rank among the world's best? We look at them and we assume it's just brutal discipline or insane cultural pressure. But what if I told you their real secret isn't about studying harder at all? What if their biggest advantage is a specific method, a method that allows them to remember more while actually studying less? Now, let's be real. You've probably been on the other side of that. You've spent hours locked in your room, your textbook covered in so much highlighter it glows in the dark. You reread chapters until your eyes burn. You feel like you're doing everything right. It feels productive. And then you sit down for the test. The question comes up and your mind is just a blank white screen. All that effort, all those hours, just gone. If that sounds familiar, I need you to listen very closely. That feeling is not your fault. It doesn't mean you're bad at studying or that you don't have a good memory. It means you've been taught a lie, a lie about how learning actually works. Today, we're going to fix that. I went deep into the science behind this, and it all came back to one game-changing book called Make It Stick. I've basically distilled its core genius into a simple system that they absolutely should have taught us in school. In this video, I'm going to reveal the three core pillars of this system. By the end, you won't just know what to do, you'll understand why the struggle you sometimes feel when learning is actually the secret to making memories stick forever. Stay with me, because this information has the power to change the way you learn anything for the rest of your life. Okay, so that feeling of your brain going blank, there's a reason for it. And it's because the most popular study habits on the planet are basically a scam. I'm talking about rereading your textbook, highlighting sentences, cramming the night before. Think about it. These things are easy. They feel productive. When you reread a page, your brain goes, oh yeah, I recognize this stuff. It gives you a warm, fuzzy feeling of familiarity. But that's the trap. It's what scientists call the illusion of mastery. You're not actually learning the ideas. You're just getting really good at recognizing the words on the page. It's the difference between being able to read the sheet music and being able to actually play the piano. Two totally different skills. There was this one professor who told a story. A student came to his office, totally crushed over a bad grade. The student said, I don't get it. I reread the chapter four times. And the professor asked a simple question. Did you ever try to explain it in your own words without looking? The answer was no. The student mistook recognizing the text for actually knowing it. So if everything we've been told to do is wrong, what's right? Here it is. This is the big secret. The key to a super memory is not about passively pushing information into your brain. It's about the effortful struggle of pulling information out. I want you to stop thinking of your brain as a filing cabinet you just stuff things into. Start thinking of it like a muscle. And what's the only way to make a muscle stronger? You have to work it. You have to put it under strain. That feeling of frustration when you can't quite remember a fact, that little mental sweat you break when you force yourself to recall a formula without looking, that is not a sign that you're failing. That is the feeling of learning. That struggle is the workout. It's you, in real time, building a stronger memory. So, how do we start this workout? How do we build a system around this one powerful idea? Well, it all comes down to three core principles that create a kind of triple threat for building a memory that actually sticks. And the first one is called active recall. Okay, so if the goal is to pull information out of our brain instead of just stuffing it in, how do we actually do that? It all comes down to a simple three-part framework. We need the system, the tools, and the mindset. Let's start with the system. This is the engine. It's a triple threat combo of techniques that forces your brain to build memories that last. First up is active retrieval. This is the big one. It simply means you stop reviewing and you start quizzing. After you read a chapter, close the book and write down everything you can remember. After you watch a lecture, try to explain the main idea out loud to an empty room. In one famous study, they had one group of students read a passage four times. The other group read it just once, but then took a test on it. A week later, who do you think remembered more? 
The group that took the test retained 50% more of the information. They spent less time studying but remembered way more, simply because they forced their brain to do a rep. The second part of the system is spaced retrieval. This is the cure for cramming. Cramming feels good, but it's like binge eating for your brain. It all comes out right after the test. Spacing is the opposite. It works by strategically letting yourself forget a little bit. That sounds weird, right? But when you wait a day or two, your memory gets a little rusty. Forcing yourself to recall it then is harder work, and that extra effort tells your brain, hey, this is actually important, don't lose it. It's like letting a muscle recover before you train it again. You can do this easily with flashcards, using a system that moves the cards you know well to a pile you only review once a week, while keeping the tough ones in a pile you review daily. And the final piece of the system is interleaving. Most students study in blocks. Monday is all biology. Tuesday is all history. That feels organized, but it's not how your brain learns best. Interleaving is when you mix it up. In one study session, you spend 25 minutes on biology, then switch to 25 minutes of history, then 25 minutes of chemistry. It will feel harder, it will feel messy, and you won't get in the zone. But that's the point. It forces your brain to constantly load and unload different ideas, which teaches you not just what to think, but how to think. You learn to see the whole chessboard, not just one piece. Okay, so that's the system. But what are the practical day-to-day -day tools you can use to put it into action? I've got three for you. First is self-explanation, or what I call the 10-year-old test. After you learn something, close the book and ask yourself, how would I explain this to a 10-year-old? Using simple words, using an analogy. If you can't simplify it, you don't really get it yet. This forces you to move beyond just recognizing words and actually build a mental model. The second tool is peer instruction. This is how you weaponize your study group. Stop just sitting next to each other on your laptops in silence. Start quizzing each other. Take turns explaining a concept from memory. Challenge each other's explanations. This gives you instant feedback and immediately shows you your blind spots. And the third tool is a bit different, but it's amazing for remembering lots of facts. It's called a memory palace. You pick a place you know like the back of your hand, like your house. Then you mentally place weird, vivid images representing what you need to remember in different rooms. To remember the steps of a scientific process, you might picture a giant beaker bubbling on your front porch, a skeleton riding a bike in your hallway, and a textbook on fire in your kitchen. To recall the info, you just take a mental walk through your house. It sounds silly, but it works. Now, for the final and most important part. You can have the best system and the best tools in the world, but they won't work if your core beliefs about learning are broken. And there are two big lies we need to destroy right now. The first is the myth of learning styles. You've heard it, you've probably even said it. I'm a visual learner or I'm a hands-on learner. Here's the truth. Study after study after study has shown this idea is basically fiction. It's a trap. Believing it gives you an excuse to avoid the methods that feel hard but are actually effective. The truth is, we all learn best when we combine multiple methods. And this leads to the final, crucial idea. Psychologists Carol Dweck calls it having a growth mindset. People with a fixed mindset believe intelligence is something you're born with. You're either smart or you're not. So when studying feels hard, they think it's a sign they're dumb, and they quit or go back to easy, useless rereading. But people with a growth mindset believe intelligence is something you can build. For them, that feeling of struggle isn't a threat. It's the entire point. They know that when they have to fight to remember something, they are literally building new connections in their brain. They understand that the feeling of difficulty is the feeling of getting smarter. This is the key that unlocks everything else. You have to embrace the struggle. So let's put it all together. The secret to remembering everything like the world's best students isn't about having a better brain or some crazy discipline we don't have. It's not a gift you're born with. It's a strategy you learn. It's a complete shift from being a passive student who just hopes the information sinks in to becoming an active learner 
who strategically builds knowledge. You stop wasting hours on rereading and start training your memory like a muscle using the triple threat system of active retrieval, spacing, and interleaving. You stop guessing and start using the right tools for the job, whether it's explaining a concept to a 10-year-old or building a memory palace. And most importantly, you stop fearing the struggle. You embrace a growth mindset because you now understand that the feeling of difficulty isn't you being dumb, it's the feeling of you getting smarter. This is how you get off the hamster wheel of studying. This is how you build knowledge that actually lasts, not just for the test, but for life. This is how you study less, but remember everything. Now, this all sounds great, but I want you to take the first step right now, not tomorrow, not next week. So here Fatality. is your first challenge. It's incredibly simple. As soon as this video ends, I want you to put your phone down, just for five seconds, and I want you to say out loud, in one single sentence, the difference between passively rereading and actively retrieving. That's it. That might sound like a silly little exercise, but it's not. That is your very first rep. It's you casting a vote for the type of person you want to become. It's proof that you're not just watching a video, you're starting to change. Do that one small thing and you've already started the journey. Hey, if this video just saved you from hours of useless studying, do me a huge favor and hit that like button and subscribe for more ways to work smarter, not harder.